Hey there, this is Tanner Steed. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about my top five favorite paintbrushes. First of all, we're going to start out with a very inexpensive yet highly effective brush. Uh, this is the Silver Grand Prix Extra Long Filbert. So this is a filbert, which means it has a tapered end, so it comes up kind of like a spoon. Um, this is a very versatile brush. It is not meant for any specific uh, use, but I tend to use it uh, very early on in a painting. It's a bristle brush, so it can uh, pick up a lot of paint. Hog hair, natural bristle. Um, the Hair itself actually has a lot of surface area on each individual hair, and so it can pick up a lot of oil paint. Um, you want to use this in the early stages of an oil painting uh, because just like a potter would be throwing uh, clay onto a potting wheel, you want to get a lot of clay, you want to get a lot of paint on the canvas before you start manipulating it uh, with any other softer brush. I tend to use this in the early stages, so I beat it up and uh, these I run out of regularly. Because they're inexpensive, I can just pick them up at my local art store. Uh, they should be pretty easy to find. You can get them at Guyrie's. Uh, you may even find them at Michael's. I go to Miningers uh, down in uh, downtown Denver, Colorado. So yeah, that's my first brush. Moving on. Uh, this is my favorite brush for landscape painting. This is the Tisch Dagger. which has this really interesting point to it. Um, I love using it for landscape painting, going outdoors, uh, painting on location. Uh, it's a bristle brush, so it picks up a lot of paint. Um, and it has a very unique edge where I can use it just like a flat. So if I needed uh, a flat edge for, let's say, some architecture, I can use it like that. I can use the, the tip of it to draw a very fine line. Um, but my favorite use for it is foliage. Um, when I need those distant, loose brush strokes to create the, the texture of maybe a distant pine tree or something, this is the brush that I love to use. Um, I'll typically have two of these, uh, one for my uh, darks, one for my lights, and I'll lace them back and forth, and it creates a really, really cool effect. So definitely uh, a good one to have. They come in multiple sizes, and again, this is the Tisch. Uh, Dagger by Rosemary & Co. Those two were bristle brushes. Now moving on to the synthetics. So we've passed the point where we've put a bunch of paint on the canvas and now we're moving on to the second stage where we're starting to refine our shapes and we're moving the paint on the canvas uh, that's already there rather than scooping up a bunch from our palette. Um, this is a Rosemary & Co. Ivory Long Flat. It's a synthetic, which means it's a bit more dainty and it doesn't take a beating very well. And that's why I use it less frequently and uh, much more accurately, more controlled, more deliberately than maybe I would with the bristle brushes. Um, this can make a very clean, sharp mark. I tend to, when I'm, let's say, painting outdoors, painting from life, I, I tend to get a lot of paint and color notes on the canvas, um, and then I start to manipulate the drawing a little bit more. Yes, I'm drawing throughout the entire stage, but in the early stages with the bristle brushes, I'm trying to get the color, the value, as accurate as possible, and then this is what I use to um, manipulate that drawing and make it much more refined, uh, especially with architecture. This brush I love to use for bricks, for anything that requires a very straight line. Another great use for it is for flowers. I love painting roses, and roses are very angular, so anything angular I like to use flats. Flats just give a very unique look. So that is the Rosemary & Co. Ivory Long Flat. Number three. Moving on, this is the Rosemary & Co. Eclipse Filbert. The 
filbert, it has that tapered edge again, but again, this is a synthetic, which is a lot softer, a lot smoother, so it's in the later stages of the, of the painting. It's not gonna pick up a lot of paint, but it's really going to help you refine the drawing, soften edges. It's probably my favorite brush for portraiture. Um, when you really need a nice, even transition from one plane to the next. This is the brush that I prefer to use, again, in the later stages. This isn't going to scratch away the paint uh, on the canvas like a bristle would. If I were to continue using a bristle brush like this uh, Grand Prix from earlier, um, this would scratch the paint away and that may actually negatively impact the natural flow of the painting. It, it can be kind of a hassle if you're using this too late in the later stages. And this is all in a painting that's generally wet on wet. So painting all the way through the oil paint is staying wet. And this could be over the course of three days uh, because oil paint takes uh, some time to dry or all at once, all at one day. Okay, so that's four brushes. Are you ready for my favorite brush of all time. It's in this box, just shipped. Are you ready? This is my favorite brush. It's a piece of crap. It's th worth uh, maybe 30 cents. Um, I got it off uh, Blix website, not even gonna tell you the brand. This could be literally any kind of paintbrush that you find. It does not take a great paintbrush to make a great painting. You could use a piece of crap. You could use a toothbrush. You could use a toothpick. You could use uh, even a paper towel or a random student grade brush to make a beautiful painting. Um, if you don't believe me, go look up Daniel Sprick's artwork. That guy buys the cheapest brush packs, uh, student grade, economy brushes from the local art store here in Denver. And his paintings are beyond anything I could imagine to paint. So it does not take the brush or a special brush to create any effect. We're not Bob Ross here. Um, we don't use fan brushes to make pine trees. Um, it has nothing to do with that. It is all in your mind. So whatever brush you have, that's the one that's gonna work, I promise. Uh, and to prove that, I'm going to paint something using just this brush. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe, like the video, and make sure to comment. Let me know what your favorite brush is. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe you need some fancy brushes. We're gonna be coming out with a weekly video and maybe more. Stay tuned, and I really appreciate that you watched. Make sure to uh, check out my Instagram. It's just Tanner Steed Fine Art, and you can check out my new updated website which is just tannersteedart.com. See you next time.